Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. In case you're not aware, I used to own my own bakery and I specialized in yeast breads made from scratch. So when it comes down to divvying out flour, I know how to measure and weigh flour. I want to show you some different ways that you can potentially scoop out flour for a recipe and make sure that you're getting the proper amount of flour in that measuring cup so that you have consistent results in your uh, baking applications. Now first of all, when you are measuring flour, you want to use a dry measuring cup, which is this. Now when I say dry, I'm talking about the style here, not wet versus dry, but this style of cup so that you can level it off like this. If you try to measure flour in this type of a vessel, it's intended for liquid use and you're not going to be able to level it off because let's say one cup is down here. This is a two cup measuring cup. Even if you want two cups of flour, the, the dividing line is up here and not at the very top. So you can't level it off. So what will you do? You'll be doing like this or like this to try to level it off. By doing that, you're compacting the flour down into there and you're going to wind up with more flour than what you intend. So you don't want to use this for measuring flour. You want to use something like this. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two, I have a bag here of buckwheat flour. When flour sits in a vessel of any sort, a bag or a container of some sort, it compresses down. So you need to kind of lighten it up. Now this bag is tall, so you're not going to be able to see too well if I use this. So we're going to pretend that this is our bag of flour. If you just simply scoop down in there and then level it off, that flour is compressed. You're going to have a lot of flour in here and it may wind up being more flour than is appropriate for your recipe and if you're making a bread or pancakes or something like that they may be on the dry side and you may have to add more liquid to it. So you don't want to just scoop and level it off because you're going to have too much flour that way. A one step better from that would be to take a spoon and spoon it out and spoon by spoon add it to your measuring cup and then level it off. But remember that flour is still compressed and by scooping it out that way that does help. But it's not the coupe de grace. If you want to really measure your flour appropriately and get the right amount in here that a recipe was probably designed for when it's been sitting in that container or bag for a while you really should go in and just kind of fluff it up a little bit stir it up some to lighten it up and uncompress it then scoop it out and add it to your measuring cup and when it's full and overflowing somewhat, then you can take a uh, straight edge of any sort and level it off. And you don't do like this, you just level it off after spooning it in there and then add it to your container of whatever choice. Now, if a recipe calls for 15 ounces of flour like mine did, you have another choice. You can take a scale, and obviously this is a two cup measure, so 15 ounces of flour would not fit in here because that's about three cups. You place your bowl or whatever you want to use on your scale, then you turn your scale on, and I've got it set for ounces and pounds. Then it doesn't matter if your flour is compressed or not because you're going to weigh it. You can scoop it out and pour it into your vessel until you get the appropriate amount of flour that you need according to your recipe if it is done by weight, okay? If it's done by cups, you may not. Now, when I ran my bakery, 
I weighed out flour to find out how much flour I consistently put in a cup. And I, I weighed out three, four, five cups of flour that I scooped out after fluffing up the flour and leveled it off this way. I, would, I weighed it and the average of those weights is what I established as my guideline when making recipes. And for me, one cup was five ounces on the scale. And that way, by weighing it out and weighing that flour consistently, I knew that my recipes would turn out right every time unless I goofed up in some other way. But regarding the flour, that was appropriate and that was right. So I wanted to show you these different ways that you could potentially measure out flour and have your results vary in your recipe outcome based on how you measure that flour. Well, I do hope this helps you out when you're making any recipe that calls for any type of flour whatsoever. Let me know if you have any questions below. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Bye for now.